as part of the uh, Ninasam's documentation project, we are doing this uh, short conversation uh, with two of you. Mm -hmm. And the uh, theme of uh, our conversation is documentation. Mm -hmm. And before that, let me uh, very briefly introduce you in one sentence. Sure. And we have uh, uh, Rustam Bharucha, who is uh, in the School of Arts and Aesthetics at Jawaharlal Nehru University, Delhi. Uh, he's a very well-known scholar of uh, uh, theater, performance studies, and various other things related to culture and society. And then we have uh, Paula Richman from the United States. She has been working on the, uh, the Ramayana, uh, the epic Ramayana, and various texts uh, that have originated from the Ramayana tradition, the, the cross-cultural, the intertextual, etc., etc. Mm. So, with two of you, what I would like to um, um, ask you is, um, in a way, your views, and also an advice to the, uh, the, the, the project that is happening with Neenasam. Neenasam was started in 1949, so we are already uh, 51 plus 16, mm -hmm. so that many years old. Mm -hmm. Tirugata is um, uh, 32 year old. Mm -hmm. A school is 37 year old. Mm. So we have now, you know, have a lot of time behind us. Yep. And we now have to think about documentation. Yeah. Mm. But there are many problems with documentation. It's very easy to say that, you know, you have to document our work, etc., mm. etc. Et but when we start doing it, and unfortunately yeah. in India, the theater makers themselves will also have to be documenters. Yeah. We don't have another uh, institution mm -hmm. or another uh, area of scholarship who will look after the, uh, the documentation yeah. aspect, the technical aspect, mm -hmm. the aesthetic aspects mm -hmm. of it. So it's the, the theater makers themselves. I mean, it's like a little bit like, uh, you know, uh, writing about ourselves. And uh, it's mm -hmm. also slightly embarrassing also too. Yeah. <laughs> and financially, uh, we have just enough money for doing theater. Then with the same money, we will also have to do mm. uh, documentation. Mm. So mm. we are, uh, Neenasam had never thought about documentation mm. until very recently. But now mm. we think that because the technology has become slightly uh, more accessible yeah. and also the modes of uh, dissemination has, mm. have also become mm. uh, uh, more accessible, mm. let us try and uh, yeah. uh, try our hands yeah. in, the, in the area of documentation. Mm. Uh, whether we succeed or failure, I mean, mm. it will take another three, four years to find out you know, what we have done is, mm. uh, so we will have to take a future uh, course mm. uh, depending on that. Mm. But our idea of documentation at the moment has uh, um, the, the, the one aspect which is related to documentation is how to document uh, a performance. Right. Mm. Uh, as we have, I mean, it's almost has been a cliche to say that it's a live performance. Mm. It happens mm. in a specific time, specific place. Mm. Mm. If a second show happens, I mean, it's like a river. You know, you cannot uh, mm. uh, uh, enter the river, the same river twice, etc. Mm. So you cannot see the same mm. performance mm. again. Mm. So we have that aspect of liveness mm. to the performances. Mm. Mm. That's one way of, uh, uh, that's one problem yeah. that we always face. How do we mm. uh, bring the uh, the live experience as close to it mm. in the the performance which is documented. Mm. Uh, the second thing is uh, without how do we document theater without making it into a cinema mm. or a TV show? Mm. Mm. Uh, the the experience of watching theater yeah. has to uh, has to be intact. Yeah. How do we preserve that? How do we pre preserve the theaterness of theater mm. in uh, the filmy documentation because yeah. the, the the documentation ultimately will have to be uh, will have to happen from a camera it yeah. will be a two dimensional object sure. so how do we yeah. uh, do that yeah. this is the uh, second thing okay. the third thing is that you know what do we do document how do we select documentation uh, what is contemporary theater i mean it's mm. a huge uh, um, mm. see if we want to uh, record uh, today's kannada theater is Yakshagana, which is happening with Ninasam, sure. is it also contemporary theater or mm. it, is it not? Mm. Do we make a separate category for it as mm. traditional performance mm. and develop different kinds <coughs> of documentation, Technique. strategies, mm. techniques mm. for those arts? 
uh, and does contemporary theatre, what we mm. call as contemporary theatre, does it need a mm. specific uh, uh, mode of documentation? Okay. So these are some of the uh, problems of uh, right. the the aesthetic, the conceptual problems behind. Uh, I am just uh, flagging, yes. you know, a few issues related to the the aesthetic part of it. Yes. If we come to the technical part of it, mm. now we have uh, uh, more accessible, mm. uh, the, the less expensive uh, uh, video cameras. We can hire uh, many such cameras now. Mm. Earlier we used to do that, you mm. know, uh, the, that uh, VHS cassette. Mm. And uh, after we, when we uh, saw the, uh, uh, the result, yeah. we would say that, you know, this is not the That's play that I did. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. But now the situation is not like that, especially in uh, developed mm. countries, for example, when I see the documentation that has happened in the globe yeah. um, uh, theatre, mm. it is um, for someone like me mm. uh, who has not uh, renewed his passport after 1998. <laughs> <laughs> I think watching that performance is almost a replacement yeah. to going to uh, London to mm. to see that performance. Mm -hmm. So I can be here, yeah. and on my internet I can watch parts of performance yeah. mm. if I want to understand when I was doing as you like it I watched the performance mm. I had an idea I, uh, my as you like it was not like there as you like mm -hmm. it but I had an idea of how they do it yeah so <coughs> uh, that is one aspect of I mean uh, how they have managed I mean I asked some of my uh, filmmaker friends I mean I showed mm. it to them the uh, the globe documentation and uh, for example Girish Kasarwali told me that probably they have six different cameras mm -hmm. but no camera is seen mm. so True. and the sound yeah. how do we handle the sound yeah. the, the the live quality of the sound it's almost like watching yeah. a live performance I mean yeah. there is no humming there is no extra Absolutely. noise Absolutely. although the audience is also there you know it happens in the the pit right. the people are standing yeah. and everything is happening mm. and that kind of uh, technology yeah. has come yeah. I mean it it uh, yeah. uh, it's not unusual in a way because mm. The cricket documentation, yeah. the the the, uh, the 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 filmed cricket, yeah. uh, has more uh, technology gone into it, and people have yeah. uh, used all their expertise to make mm. it into a, a spectacle, yeah. for good or for bad or whatever. Yeah. But if that kind of technology can come into theatre, yeah. we can probably do wonders with. Uh, yeah. And the another area is live streaming. Whether mm. we really go into it mm -hmm. as. Um, as part of theatre or as a, mm -hmm. a, a sub-branch where we attract more people into, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. uh, into theatre uh, as an economic alternative, is yeah. that a possibility in the future? So these are the second technical uh, aspects. And the third aspect is the, the dissemination. Uh, we have had in India several cases where mm -hmm. documentation is made and then it is buried. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And it is not used. And we have a very, you know, some exotic image that in after 150 years, somebody will come mm. and use it. We really don't know uh, what mm. really happens after the VHS cassette, That's which was the norm in 15 years, is not there. Mm. Mm. So what will happen to technology, what, yeah. whether people yeah. would uh, watch these videos yeah. after 150 yeah. years is a very hypothetical yeah. question. Yeah. But with that hypothesis, what we are actually missing to uh, do uh -huh. is that we are not catering to the research scholars and students of today. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, we are too much yes. concerned about the future and forgetting yeah. the, the, right. the, the, the presentness of documentation. Mm -hmm. For example, documentation can, can, it need not be about future. It could no, be about present. somebody who is in America mm -hmm. uh, wants to see Nina Sam. Mm -hmm. The documentation can be of help. Mm -hmm. I mean, instead of doing a, uh, mm -hmm. a, an, a uh, a long journey, mm -hmm. spending time, energy. Mm -hmm. Similarly, for me to globe, instead of glo going to globe theater, you know, that could be an alternative. Yes, sure. So we have not explored that kind of, uh, uh, yeah. you know, how do we disseminate? Mm -hmm. But things have changed. Something like YouTube is with us. So if we document and put it on YouTube, it will be seen, uh, it will be seen uh, by many people. For the last uh, four or five years in collaboration mm -hmm. with Sunchi Foundation, Nina Sam has done this. Mm -hmm. And people are weaving it. Mm -hmm. And we are getting um, uh, mm -hmm. responses from various parts of the world, mm -hmm. uh, not only from Karnataka, not only from India. Mm -hmm. So we are excited about it. Mm -hmm. But we are also mm -hmm. scared of uh, yeah. uh, the, the whole thing because, yeah. uh, uh, you know, uh, for example, 
when we uh, um, recorded this year's Tirgata performance, there was a huge dilemma whether we should put the, uh, the documented uh, video on YouTube when the shows are going on okay. or should we wait until the shows are over, over. when the production is dead then we should should we start showing it mm. or can we show it parallelly mm. this was a question and then we had uh, we took feedback from various mm. friends and finally decided that we will wait until yeah. uh, the, the the actual production is yeah. going on yeah. so this is the background of our yeah. talk yeah. i would uh, request you both mm. to respond to all these points mm. raised and mm. if you want to say something more okay. please and please uh, sort of uh, prod us if yeah. we forget your yeah very well framed questions. Well, as a very long term uh, associate of Nina Sam, I would correct you slightly and say that you have been documenting your history for a long time. And I know this because I'm a writer. And I know as a writer writing about theater in India, and Paula is discovering this as we work together in the Ramayana, that it's miserable mm -hmm. to get the basic facts, you know? Mm -hmm. And what has impressed me about Nina Sam is that long, long, I mean, in your past, you have, for example, uh, statistics mm -hmm. of the number of shows that you yeah. perform, where you perform, mm -hmm. you know, that mm -hmm. already gives us something to fall back on. I think when you are talking about documentation, I think probably the, uh, the shift is, the priority is now for, a visual documentation yeah, yeah, through yeah, video yeah, yeah, and, yeah, you, yeah. and dissemination yeah. and all of that. And you've also been doing that. And I know having directed Wojciech on this very stage, it was, I think, a very strong production done in the round, as you know. But we only had one camera, yeah. and it was a nightmare. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't, it, it was a very dynamic production. And of course, you know that you cannot do uh, a play, uh, a production in the round that was swirling all the time with one camera, it, you don't get the right picture. So you've highlighted uh, a lot of the, the challenges in the past, but attempts have been made by Nina Sam. Mm. And uh, I think that's very important to hold on, the bookkeeping. Mm. So documentation is not uh, you know, something very elaborate, it's just keeping an account of what you're doing. You know, I think you'll have done a great job that way. Newsletters have existed, you know. And the, of course, the fact that you, are, you also have a publishing house, you know, already there is some kind of uh, documentation process that's going on. Now, on the issue of liveness that you brought up, this is a, a real uh, <laughs> debated issue, in, as you know, in performance, and we, we've all grown up with the the angst, the pain that when the production ends, it dies. And you know, we, <laughs> we lament this fact in all kinds of ways. And I can't deny when I was rather young and I used to act, I used to feel terrible after a play came to an end because we felt it's all over. <laughs> and for the longest time, I think uh, performance study scholars have played into the ephemerality of the performance experience. I'm happy to say that today we don't lament the fact that theater dies. Yes, the existential life of theater in a certain form, in a certain, that will die, yes, but it doesn't mean it's not going to be repeated. Mm -hmm. And, but we would now, I would say we, meaning a large number of scholars in performance studies, we uh, have a very different reading of liveness. Uh, we are not trying to negate the fact that the ontology of the theatrical experience is something very, very intimate, very corporeal and all of that stuff. But we also know that theater continues to live in different mnemonic registers, different memories, and different discourses. This has become the new uh, way of researching theater. So for example, we have people working on 19th century Bengali theater who would be turning to police records you know, and we'd be getting little insights and we'd be finding new ways of sort of piecing fragments and relating fragments together. Yes, so theater dies and does not die. It lives and does not live. You could take that paradoxical. Uh, at no point should we think that the, the documentation substitutes for the live experience. Forget that, it isn't. You know, it's, it's, it's a filmed, you're seeing, it's a two-dimensional thing. So it, has, it must be seen with different objectives, you know? And I think documentation is very necessary for research, 
I, I mean, you're quite right. Why are we thinking about the future? What about people? Why is it that there is such a dearth of real academic scholarship on theater and performance in India compared to so many other fields? And I would attribute that at one level to the lack of documentation. We just don't have documents that can be studied, even from the 70s, for example, you know? It doesn't exist, you know? There are a few photographs, and yes, that was the standard way of documenting. But, but we know, yeah, I, I, I kind of like theater photography, but we know theater photography is a genre mm. in its own right. You know, you have to know how to read those particular photographs. But it's a big drawback. And when we are now in the global world of scholarship, if, you t if you're with a Japanese, the Japanese were documenting their performances, the avant-garde from the 60s onwards. You have first-rate documentation from the 60s. All the avant-garde performance, all the happenings, everything has been documented very, very well. But that's a, a Japanese kind of prioritization. We did not prioritize this. So I think it's about time that we do, you know. And what else? Was there anything else that I, I haven't addressed? Uh, and also the... <coughs> the uh, what do you think about this live streaming, the possibility of... I like it. I mean, I have not... Uh, I have watched one of the Globe performances while I was flying. And you know what a arduous... I was going to Brazil, and uh, that's a very long journey. And I am not very fond of whatever they show. And then I said, okay, let's watch this. And I watched Twelfth Night uh, from beginning till the end. Hmm. I thought it was a very interesting experience for me, as because I know Twelfth Night, and I felt that was a very fine production. Mm. But I did uh, watch some, tried to see other, and I found they were very different. Mm. They didn't satisfy me in the same way. So that's bound to happen, yeah. you know. So in every documentation project, I would say, uh, it's not you raise this issue of the contemporary and should we include the Yakshagana? Yes, sure, Yakshagana is very much part of the contemporary. We can't exclude that. You yeah, know, this yeah. is one of the things that Paul and I are very clear that for us the Ramayana is something deeply contemporary, you yeah. know, and it's, it resonates in all. But I would say, what kind of Yakshagana are you watching? Like if, you were, if you're documenting the Tala Madhale that we saw yesterday, that's one framework. Hmm. If you saw an open air performance, it yeah. would be another framework. Yeah. If you're watching Nina Sam performing here, that's one framework. If you watch it in the field, it's a different framework. Mm. So I think it's not just genre, mm. uh, but it's also the performative circumstances, yeah. you know? Yeah. So what are those performative circumstances, and can you train the people who are holding the camera to actually tune in? Yeah. This is, the training is missing yeah. at that level, I would say. Yeah. So these yeah. are some of my observations. Yeah, because we work without a tradition of documentation, yes. of visual documentation, yeah. let's yeah. say. Yeah. We have to reinvent the wheel yes. in, in many ways because uh, yeah. um, uh, the, the question is, I mean, we all know that Yakshagana is as contemporary as yeah. our sense, yeah. but probably the documentation strategy will have to be different, for, different. Uh, yeah. for Yakshagana. For Bharatanatyam, it has to be different. Yes. Uh, for Kudiyatam, it has to be different. And Particularly difficult for dance, if I may say yeah. so. And there's some lamentable examples of some of the greatest filmmakers not getting it right. Mm. Uh, for example, uh, the great Shotujit Rai, we know that his film on Bala Saraswati is embarrassing. Mm. He, he got it wrong. Firstly, you don't make a great dancer like her dance on sand with the waves in the background and her, you know, <laughs> sari is billowing in the w and all of that in the breeze. It's distracting. Or even for that matter, a very sensitive uh, filmmaker like uh, Kumar Shani working on Guru Kelucher and Mahapatra in a very sort of synth synthetic landscape, it doesn't work. And you realize, it, I mean, people with a very heightened aesthetics do not always get it right. So dance, I think, uh, presents huge problems, uh, particularly in terms of framing. Mm. Mm. But I suppose that would hold true for even a something more like spoken drama like mm. what exactly what is the nature of the close-up here you know when do you close up uh, mm. what is the do you hold the frame you know like you know totally clear uh, you know Bertolt Brecht for example had very specific views on how his plays needed to be documented mm. and uh, it's very formulaic you know and uh, not very exciting but from the uh, perspective of study
mm. you know, you do get mm. a perspective. Mm. I'm not yeah, saying it's a... wrote an Atta for his... Uh, yes, he did. Mm. A model books. Mm. These are the model books. And uh, he had, yeah, he was thinking of the future. Mm. And uh, I don't know if that is necessarily a good thing to legislate it in, mm. in that kind of way. It was very meticulously mm. uh, recorded. Mm. But we still need uh, institutions support yeah. funding yeah. for this very I mean, much no no organization can do it by itself i think many if you think of ford foundations uh, enormous investment you know there were so many documentation centers in the 80s they produced rubbish for the most part i mean especially the ones working on video i mean yeah. There are some organizations that are defunct today. Mm. And you're right, the life of the video is very short-lived. You know, it, does, it gets fungus and, you know, it doesn't work. But more than that, it's the eye that has to be trained, you know. And the person holding the camera has to be in sync with the documentation process and priorities. And what we have found, Paula and I have found, because we were wanting to have a visual component to the book that we're working on, on the Ramayana performance traditions, uh, and we found that the very interesting and good filmmakers were really not interested in documentation. They were interested in making their own films, which is perfectly acceptable, but not necessarily useful from our point of view. You know? So these are some of my observations. Yep. Yep. I think uh, a couple of things strike me about what needs to be decided first. Um, I uh, had recently retired from a college that also had a music conservatory. And the conservatory used its documentation regularly in the classroom. So uh, in the classroom, like in your own courses, you're not going to use nine hours of documentation, right? That's too much for making a point and uh, when, you, when you film a stage, even though uh, you think you're getting the liveliness of it, it can become tedious to watch uh, performance uh, on, uh, on film. I suggest uh, two kinds of documentation. One, if you want to have everything completely documented, but also I think for each um, performance, you could decide to make a short film that would just focus on certain kinds of techniques or styles or scenes, pivotal scenes, that you then could use in your own school and your students could see, like, you know, um, with Shakespeare, everyone knows how so-and-so did it and so-and-so did it and so-and-so. You could use that in your own teaching. Mm -hmm. And those films should be short. Mm. In my experience, 10 to 18 minutes is the max, mm. OK? Because mm. you want to have a discussion yeah. about it afterwards. Uh, second, what is the relationship between documentation and an archive? Now, um, in some archives, they receive no use. Um, they decay. And yet, you've invested a lot of money in it. So. One thing to think about is how you could integrate the documentation process into Nina, Ninasam's own uh, pedagogy. Mm -hmm. Like if in each graduating class, one or two people could get some certificate in documenting their class's productions, then they would also have experience to get a job later on if they decided that that was something that they really wanted to do. Um, it, I, I agree with Rustam that um, you are in, so, in such a better state of documentation already because of the programs that you have for the cultural uh, weeks where you have beautiful color photographs which give the essence of what happened during that week. First color, that is absolutely invaluable because then we know that a particular play was performed in the context of a theme for that program and also what else the people who attended were seeing on the following night. Now, I was here for one week and I was constantly comparing 
the program on Monday night <laughs> with the program on Tuesday night. I think that is a real strength of Ninasim. You should be proud of it. And that is something that you can easily keep. Um, I think you could take documentation to a ridiculous outcome. I, I once went to a documentation center and said I was interested in seeing some examples of a particular kind of uh, performance tradition. And the man said, yes, we have 16 hours, but no index to the hours. Yep. Hmm. I'm not going to sit there for 16 hmm. hours to see how I could use that material. Hmm. Uh, so th to me, that is hmm. mindless documentation. Yeah. Yeah. If yeah. you have a purpose for your documentation, hmm you'll find that it'll be uh, very useful. Now, the other thing I think that it really is an asset for Ninasim is you have a very good library. And it's getting bigger and better all the time. So you can get a sense of how those materials are being used by the students and by the scholars. Mm -hmm. And you can incorporate the documentary materials into your system of cataloging or whatever, so that people, if they read a book on a particular playwright, know that there is, some, mm -hmm. there are some films that you can see in conjunction with looking at those materials. Um, I, I think that for scholars, it's been very difficult for, um, for us to track down even basic things like, did the playwright write any documents about the purpose and the goals of the performance? And if so, were they ever kept or were they thrown away? Um, in some cases, for example, uh, it's almost impossible until very recently to get a copy of um, Aravindan's uh, film of the play by um, C.N. Srikantan Nair. That shouldn't be so. Uh, that film, you remember, yeah. you, you looked for it for months, and then, and then I said to you, I've been trying to find this film for six years. Mm -hmm. The only really good copy for a long time was either in Japan mm -hmm. or in the Pune archives, but they were charging quite a lot of money to have access to it, so we couldn't use it for mm -hmm. a festival. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I feel like it's, it's very important for Ninasam to set a standard for other places. Mm. You know, you, you can um, think in your documentation, what kind of um, key terms mm. should we have for this? Mm. So that if people call up um, Shakespeare in Canada or um, Samsa, Samsa. <laughs> Samsa, immediately, they will be able to get access to that. Because mm. you have to sort of yeah. try on mm. all sorts of mindsets. Um, if I'm looking at props, how would I access that for a particular yeah. production? If I'm looking at uh, minimalist drama, I think if you think about that before the documentation starts, yeah. you'll also learn something about your yeah. collection. Mm. Yeah. And also, probably, we need to. Um, uh, to lobby, mm. uh, for for example, for Sangeet Nath Academy mm. has a huge archive. Huge. Mm. I mean, probably yeah. from uh, the, the, the beginning, the fifties. We went there recently, my uh, NPhil students. Mm. Uh, be a part of a documentation process with the University of Cologne, mm. which uh, interesting, and I would love to get you in touch with this, for which you will need to renew your passport, <laughs> because <laughs> this is the biggest theater archive in the world. Mm. It's in Cologne. It's in a castle. It's huge. Mm. I mean, I can't tell you what they have over there. It, it is European drama. Mm. But if you were studying, let's say, Orientalism, my god, the, the, the photo documentation, the set designs that you have yeah. of Orientalist kinds of takes on, on, on drama in general, with sometimes with Indian theme, it's phenomenal, you know? Yeah. So uh, we're, in, we're in close collaboration with uh, Peter Marx, who's uh, the professor there. And he came over to JNU, and we had a kind of a 10-day long workshop. Mm. And we did visit Sangeet Natak Academy mm. and IGNCA. Mm. And they have enormously rich material. But they're not accessible. They're not, the accessi accessibility mm. is a problem. Yeah. Yeah. 
but they've got you know the uh, tiny little photographs going back to the 50s which mm. were very sharp very beautiful and you got a real sense of who was meeting whom mm. in all these seminars and things like that but that brings up another issue how how much do you want to keep your documents for your own yeah. private you know connoisseurship mm. uh, Sometimes you can go to some of these documentation centers and they'll have the most ridiculous reasons why you may not use their materials. Yeah. As if it's so important to protect the materials yeah. from scholars. Yeah. Well, what are the materials for? So what? lobbying would need to be done at that level, Akshara, whereby all these materials, they are being digitized. Yeah. And now if they digitize, don't just digitize them and keep them. They have to be disseminated. Yeah. They, they have to be yeah. put on a website yeah. Yeah. where yeah. people can access yeah. it. And with, it, it uh, is, I mean, if India can produce uh, such a wonderful yeah. website like the, the railway reservation website, mm -hmm. yes. which Incredible. is probably one of the biggest websites in the world. Yes. Mm. And, it's, and it it's, works. Uh, it works. It works very well. Mm. Yeah. So if India can produce that, I mean, yeah. I, I don't think that this is, this is going to be a huge problem. But there is a fun problem at hmm. some, we are talking of new technologies yeah. but we are also talking of uh, new positions hmm. you know hmm. and salaries that hmm. are that are commensurate and that are worthy you know hmm. people who are, are passionate about these things yeah. don't get sidelined into taking other jobs yeah. because you're being paid a pittance yeah. this is hard work yeah. and it's not just for a short time this is forever doc you know if you open one of these centers the work is limitless yeah. you yeah. you know you can't put okay, a okay can i uh, yeah. can i go back to my point sure um in delhi there is um a documentation center for musical materials um and they do workshops in different parts of mm. india and the world it's an archive network and i think that they might be willing to come down and do a workshop with you mm. as part of their outreach. Yeah. Because their job is to teach people how mm. to do this. Now, I still think they haven't solved the problem of how do you keep ants out of your archives and other kinds of vermin. Mm. I mean, they have to think mm. about the fact that not everybody can have a humidity controlled you know, room that uses lots of electricity. Mm. But I think if, if you say, we have these issues. We want your advice and the advice of your field about how to deal with them, instead of just saying, come give us a workshop. If you tell them what you're using this material for, they would customize it for you. It's uh, ARCE, yeah, -E, -E. who's been working on the, Archive. see, it's interesting. We're, we're using two words almost synonymously, and that's documentation center and archives, mm -hmm. you know, and I think they are, I, we don't have to be purist in our use of these words, but I think we need some, a little more clarity for yeah. ourselves, you know, yeah. like what do we, what's the difference between these two things, you know? And what will the use of these yes. things be? You know, many years ago, uh, when I first wrote about documentation, it's an article that appeared in a magazine, uh, it was uh, sparked by an invitation I received to attend a conference on women's documentation centers, uh, mm -hmm. it, and it was in Pune. And it was an extraordinarily powerful uh, meeting. I met people from all kinds of social movements. So if we think it's hard to you know, document performance, it's probably even harder to document movements, social you know, movements, which yeah. are you know, massive and they're, they're processual and all of that. And one uh, veteran from the women's movement in the 70s got up and said something I have never been able to forget, and I am very provoked by it and uh, challenged by it. She says, you know, we thought we knew everything about the women's center, about the women's movement, when we wanted to start our documentation center. She didn't use the word archive. And we realized, and she's, these were her words, we had to create our evidence. And I thought that was an unbelievably uh, powerful because we assume the evidence of whatever we're trying to is given. It's there, and we just document it. Or we, but sometimes maybe it's not that clear cut. You know, if you want to, let's say, give the history of Nina Sam in the 70s, mm. you'd have to assemble a lot of facts together, mm -hmm. you know, to present a coherent picture. So that was very, uh, it made me realize how much creativity is involved in documentation. And if I can follow up on that point, um, consider, while, while there's still time, consider having your students do oral history projects. 
Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be exhaustive, right. but uh, talking to living uh, both yeah. uh, directors, actors, or even people who came and, like I noticed, you, uh, I was here three years ago at the theater last night, I recognized faces that I saw <laughs> three years ago at the theater. You have some regular attenders. Yeah. Yeah. They and also, uh, it, it probably needs some kind of an exchange program between mm. organizations within India. Mm. Mm -hmm. You know, we know more about Europe than the, yeah, yeah. the, the neighboring true. state, which yeah. is the state today. Yeah. So, if somebody can from Nina Sam can go yeah. to uh, yeah. from, uh, to uh, Adi Shakti, from Adi Shakti to Shukracharya Rabha's. Uh, uh, but festival. I think, uh, uh, to be honest with you, everybody is in the same. <laughs> Boat. Yeah, boat. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, that's a euphemism. I could use some other harsh word. The problem there, but, with those yeah. archives yeah. is that they, uh, the ones that I know, they got some money, mm -hmm. they made the mm -hmm. copies, but there is not an ongoing archivist to help people yeah. get yeah. access yeah. Yeah. to that material. That comes so to the workshop question of funding, funding, funding yeah. that, um, and training. Yeah. I think we have yeah. to make this. Uh, uh, this uh, you were raising a very interesting point on orality mm. now the only time i've ever written a book where orality was at the core was of course my book on komal kothari mm. and it, it it's a very interesting uh, process because all that was involved was a tape recorder mm. a tiny little tape recorder and it's significant that i did not go overboard with the hours of recording uh, a rather negative, the only negative review I received of that book was from a local in Rajasthan who I was, I, I just honestly said there are about 30 hours of recording. It wasn't a big deal for me. And he kind of disdained the fact that I could do an oral history, but only 30 hours of recording mm -hmm. when I needed to do, let's say, 300 hours of recording. <laughs> but what this man doesn't realize that with every hour of recording, you multiply it by 10. Mm -hmm because that's the kind of work you have to put into yeah. that one hour of recording. recording. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then only does it begin to make sense. Yeah. Yeah. So it goes through those different stages and then you have something concrete at the end of the, yeah. of but the I, process. But I also want to stress that if you want to do documentation seriously, you have to integrate it into the everyday working of the institution. Yes, yes, yes. I'm yeah. the, 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 I mean, that's, uh, the, that's where I um. think that documentation is not separate from dissemination. Mm. Exactly. They are actually the, the, the same activity. Yeah. One has to be the purpose for the other. The and positive pedagogy. Effect. I would add pedagogy, yeah, yeah, yeah. because yeah. you are a teaching institute. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So I think that's a very concrete suggestion. That's a concrete suggestion. And and another yeah. concrete suggestion is the, is the question of ownership, for example, yeah. that you raised. Yeah. I think for example, this project, mm -hmm. we have the first decision, one of the first decisions we have made is that we will put it on Creative Commons yeah. Uh, yeah. license Access. that anybody can this use it, it yeah. without paying anything to Ninasam or even at best acknowledge it. Yeah. Uh, no, no, uh, not, not at best. Huh. Every time someone uses it, they must acknowledge yeah. it. Yeah. I, I have to say that the misuse and non-acknowledgement of sources online for a scholar is frankly shocking. Huh. You just put on the site a, a place where the watcher has to agree to the following conditions. They must always acknowledge yeah. Ninasan. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's appropriate and also it will make it clear that your materials online mm. are of a high quality mm. and that people are citing you. I think that's a very, uh valid point because you know we all face the problem in teaching institutions in India plagiarism mm. it's like common practice and it's perfectly acceptable no it's not uh, and not at all at, not all. at all so <laughs> so no but that's exactly what you have to instill new norms and, and new kinds of vigilance and new modes of acknowledgement yeah. And yeah, but at the same time, you don't have to get paranoid about it and say, and get into that ownership model. So mm -hmm. you share it, mm -hmm. but acknowledgement is, is very necessary and it's the right thing to do. It's yeah. the gracious. right thing to, go, to do. And also it will, make it, it will make it clear to other organizations that they should use that same format. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. You know? I mean, sometimes people download something from the web and they have no idea where it came from. Yeah. 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 Uh, I, ha I had one more thing I just wanted to mention. Um, uh, in, in many places where
people are not near a major research library. Um, they depend on having access to online to collections at big universities. Mm. And some of the programs that are available are only available to groups that are willing to pay $20,000 or even $40,000 a year mm. to have access to the materials. Mm. I have found that that reduces dramatically the extent to yeah. which people can incorporate material about theater or other areas yeah. into the social history of the time. I mean, this is an amazing institution, and it's gone through decades when things were changing all the time in India. Yeah. It's not just the plays, it's the way people think about dressing, you know, it's the way people think about what kind of register of um, Kannada to use. Mm -hmm. All of those things are useful to scholars. Another thing that Paula stresses quite uh, uh, correctly um, is reception. Mm. So I think, you know, the fact that you saw some regulars in the audience when you came back, this is uh, Nina Sam's tradition because it has built, it is built around certain communitarian kinds of values. Ideals, yeah, and, you're, you're uh, great on a those people who are the regulars, like we've already done a little bit of research in the Talamadale because we talked to at least three people, including you. Just <laughs> what did you think of this, uh, this production, this performance? Mm. And I've learned a lot from it mm. because I, as a non kanadiga and I don't know the language, and Talamadale is highly verbal, mm. I had a certain take on what are the necessary performative mm. attributes of Talamadale. And they did not all no. agree on that. Yeah, they they had different criteria. different criteria. That's so important yeah, very to know. Important. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. that, I think, well, in very advanced websites, you know, I can think of indigenous communities and all, there are new ways, interactive mechanisms, yeah. whereby people can feed a research yeah. process, you mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. uh, especially when oral history is involved. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and, but uh, I think reception, in my view as a theater scholar, the least explored, yeah. least explored yeah. category in theater yeah. history, I can put it categorically is in the area of spectatorship. Yeah. Yeah. Spectatorship is theoretically, unlike film studies and other, other disciplines, it's so undeveloped at the moment. And we either have very, very highly inflected theoretical you know, philosophies of spectatorship relating to Rasa and so on. But in today's context, you yeah. know, what is spectatorship? And I think you are in a unique position to actually <clears throat> follow up on it because you have an audience you're, you've built a relationship with over the years. Mm -hmm. And I, I also think that uh, those members of the audience would take great pleasure in contributing to the archive mm. of uh, an institution that they have watched grow. And they're part of that institution. That was very important yeah. in K.V. Subarna's vision that mm. uh, it's not any one person's institution, it's a community's mm. institution. And that you do have the, you know, the, the kind of resources and the, the tangibility, the fact that you meet these people, you drink coffee with them on a regular basis. Some you, of them you, volunteer here? The volunteers here. Yeah. So that history, if they could uh, contribute, just yeah. interviewing them, yeah. you know, and getting them to remember certain critical performances, mm. this is very necessary, I feel. And also, wouldn't it be fun, I mean, for a class to each one student to interview some people yeah. and then share what they learned. It's like learning where you came from, you know? Yeah. And, and w the more I think about it, the more I think that you are um, very well suited yeah. for a project like this. You know, the, somebody was telling me recently about, uh, um, I'm trying to get the exact context. Somebody's working on a performance. Yeah, it was on Nina Sam actually. And somebody's doing a doctorate, a PhD on mm. Nina Sam. And this young man came up and he was talking to me about different things and was very philosophical. And, and I said, but what productions are you engaging Focusing with? Mm. You know, and he says, no, I'm giving a, a, a just genuine. <laughs> I said, you can't talk about theater like that. <laughs> you know, because the productions change depending, mm. but you had Nakraj in, in your company and he mm. had a certain persona, it had a certain aesthetic at mm. that point. And yeah. then it went through changes. Yeah. 
I said, you can't. You have to. I agree, you can't take on all the productions because you never saw them, mm. you know. Mm. But at least give me three to five and do your work on those productions. Yeah. And that's the hardest thing, yeah. Akshara. Yeah. Yeah. That is really hard to reconstruct the life of a yeah. particular production. But I don't think it's original research unless it's connected to something besides the general uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Idea absolutely. of the Nasa. Absolutely. Yeah. I feel you're, you're shortchanging the whole process of doing theater theater research, you yeah. know, you're not engaging with that thing in front of do you. you. Do you have a collection of scripts? I know some of your stuff uh, is in scripts. Yeah, we have, uh, we have a collection, but uh, uh, beyond a point, um, you know, thank you for all this advice mm -hmm. and, uh, and also the good words about mm -hmm. uh, the uh, Nina Sam. But Nina Sam also has a limit of, uh, yeah. you know, Energy. It, it, it wants to do only those things that it can do well. Well, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, if you uh, put your hands into too many things, yeah. Yeah, then it becomes unmanageable and you will not yeah. be able to do. Yeah. Uh, see, yeah. you, you are running a theatre institute, you are running a repertory, and now this is the third area where Nina Sam has it to. It is a third area. Uh, Akshara, you have correctly pointed out it cannot be just using people who are already part of the yep. product, they are already overworked, yes. you yeah. know. Yeah. Yep. So now you need a third unit for which funding is necessary, you know. So I also um, want to mention an idea um, of apprentices. Hmm. Um, in the United States, this is a very, um, what would you call it, controversial notion. Hmm. Um, research has shown that when people go and apprentice, with a company or with an institution um, for a short period of time with some specific goals. Mm. Like, I want to come to your institution and I want to archive this, or I want to come to this institution and for three months I want to collect everything I can about this. Um, they get to know the institution, but they also get to know how institutions work mm. so that later on they are much more um, uh, attractive as candidates for jobs. Yeah. Now, not every student who graduates from Ninasim is going to get a job in the theater, I yeah. think. Yeah. But at least in the case of Tala Madle, that's not a problem. Yeah. Doctors are doing it, lawyers are doing it, children are having their Tala Madles. So the more skills they can get during their time here, the better they are. Maybe a recent graduate could come back for mm, yeah. three months as an apprentice and take a particular issue and do documentation for that. Mm. Another area which has already, I mean, uh, this, um, uh, the, the, the third area, mm. documentation, yeah. uh, we, are, uh, we have been very fortunate to get the collaboration of Sanchi Foundation. They are yeah. the, our partners of, uh, sure. you know, in, in the documentation project. Great. We would not have been able to do even this much right. yeah. without uh, them coming into yeah. uh, to our work. Yeah. I mean, they are also doing voluntary work. They are also contributing mm. their time and energy and all yeah. that. Mm -hmm. And for uh, they they have no uh, mm. profit mm -hmm. uh, coming out of it. And uh, that's one way, you know, uh, of uh, networking with uh, organizations mm. who are uh, instead of Nina Sam doing everything, yeah. you know, so networking with uh, organizations who are uh, yeah. uh, doing documentation yes. and providing them whatever they want. Yeah. So what we have, we will provide it to them, and what they have, they will uh, provide, provide it to, to us. Yeah. Yeah. So, thank you for this uh, uh, sharing of thoughts. Uh, Nina Sam has put the first step in mm. collaboration with uh, Sanchi Foundation. Okay. Uh, we will hope to do similar yeah. conversations in the future. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Good luck. Thank, thank you. you for inviting us.